conventional banking business model, which goes back some years. Uh, you could point to a couple of institutions in Europe that can trace their histories back to the 15th century. In fact, one of them, Beringberg Bank in Austria, I believe can trace its origins back in its current form to the beginning of the 16th century, beginning of, I think, 1509, they trace the history back to. And that is demonstrating that the conventional or the orthodox banking operating model is not recent. Let's say it's at least 500 years old, if not older. And it's based on these four, these four essential core concepts. First, the concept of leverage. They're, they're no particular order here, by the way, they're all as important as each other. The concept of leverage. Uh, a small capital base, in other words, the institution's own funds, is uh, doesn't support the funding of most of its lending, its asset base. So it's levered up into an asset pool that could be 10, 20 or 30 times. Uh, these days, there's a limit on that number, by the way. Uh, a small capital base compared to other industries and other corporate entities is leveraged up uh, into an asset pool that is bigger, much bigger in terms of multiple than that capital base. Um, the gap when we bring in the, a banking institution lends on one on the one hand, it also takes in deposits on the other hand. It's engaged in deposit taking business and in lending business. And the deposits are used to fund the lending, at least traditionally anyway, go back to the beginning of the 16th century and there wouldn't have been an interbank market or a wholesale capital market. So all the lending you were doing would have been the deposit would have been funded by the deposits you were bringing in. But the lending was on a different maturity and interest rate basis, or certainly maturity basis to the deposits. So that created a mismatch. And we in England, we use the term gap. I suppose on, in some other countries, they prefer the term mismatch. But there's a gap between the contractual maturity of the lending and that of the deposits. So that's a that, that that's a, a maturity mismatch or gap that is part of the conventional uh, banking business model. And that gap gives rise to liquidity risk. If I take in a contractually short term deposit, but I lend it contractually much longer term in a loan, I'm making an assumption, I've stated explicitly or implied, but I'm making an assumption that I will always be able to raise more deposits to carry on funding the existing loan. And that assumption of continuous liquidity is sometimes uh, you know, a reasonably realistic assumption, but occasionally it becomes a very strong assumption that doesn't hold a good, as we saw in September 2008, and then I've got a bit of a problem. So that's liquidity risk. And then finally, the act of lending money uh, generates credit risk, because the borrower may well default on the, um, on the loan. So I've got to manage that credit risk um, as, as part of the ordinary course of business.